Hi everybody, this is Joel Carlson with Faces of Minnesota. Today my guest is Natalie Kane of WCCO-TV, FSN North, Big Ten Network. Well, I could go on and on, but you get the idea. It's Natalie Kane, who's currently with WCCO-TV, handling the traffic and entertainment reporting. So Natalie, first I want to say congratulations on your one year anniversary with WCCO-TV and ask you your first question. How has your first year gone for you and what are some of the challenges or what was some of the learning curve that you had to adjust to with being on morning television? Well the first year has been amazing. Uh, it's really been a phenomenal learning experience. Um, when I first started there was a pretty sharp learning curve specifically for traffic because traffic is such a specialized thing to do. Um, but as soon as I got the hang of it, it's been really fun to grow that and get into a groove there. Um, from there, I've really been growing as a reporter um, and a storyteller. So that's been amazing. Um, and the people I work with are pretty phenomenal. So the biggest challenge, obviously, is the hours. Um, I think some people don't realize quite how early it is that we have to wake up. So uh, most of our producers are in overnight because they're story and news gathering overnight and writing. Um, and then uh, as news anchors, we come in around anywhere from 3 to 4.30 a.m. I come in at 4.30 um, and then we're on air from basically then until 9 a.m. And then we come around again for the noon show. So, uh, you know, do the math. If, you, if I'm in at 4.30, um, I'm usually getting up between 3 and 3.30 to do my hair and makeup, everything at home. Um, arrive here and be camera ready, re do some research on the roads, figure out what the conditions are like for the day, uh, figure out what's going in the rundown, make sure my other stories, my feature stories are all in and um, in line, and then it's show time. So it takes, a, it takes a little bit of time before we're actually on air. Um, so again, if you do the math backward, in order to get at least, you know, six, seven hours of sleep, that's about an 8 p.m. bedtime. So it's been quite a life change for me. Especially doing the entertainment reporting. Yeah. I can imagine with <laughs> a lot of shows and uh, sporting events and so forth that happen during the late night hours, is that a challenge to kind of figure out what you're going to make and not make? Yes, it is. Um, also, uh, this is a bad habit I've developed, but I check Twitter, Facebook, and my email throughout the night. Sometimes I'm awake and realize I'm doing it, and sometimes I am doing it in my sleep, which again, I don't think is necessarily a good thing. <laughs> uh, but that's the way I keep in touch with what's going on. Um, social me media is such a huge, it's just a huge part of my life and my information gathering. Um, so that's, that's one of the main ways to do it. And then I have a lot of great contacts around the Twin Cities who I can keep in touch with. Um, if it's a concert, I can plan ahead for that. Um, but it's when it's some sort of breaking news, I rely on our producers here and then also social media. Okay, cool. Now one of the things, Natalie, that you primarily were focused on was sports, being with the Timberwolves and then Gophers. Um, how has it been transitioning to getting into traffic and entertainment? Because mm -hmm. those are kind of new genres for you. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that those are entertainment and feature storing and human interest stories. That's more my comfort zone. Um, sports, uh, getting into sports happened because I was involved with the Timberwolves and then those opportunities kept growing. Um, so really more of my interests lie in current events, uh, more like pop culture on the pop culture side, music, fashion, um, food, dining, so more on the entertainment side of things. Um, but reporting is reporting, whether you're reporting on, on a, at a basketball game or a baseball game, football game, um, or if you're reporting on um, a charity, some sort of charity event that is uh, raising whatever in the Twin Cities, it's, it's the same. It's this, you know, you have to do the, you have to get the story across. Right. Um, so reporting is reporting. Right. Mm -hmm. Another question to ask you, you seem to be part of a new breed or hybrid group of media people who don't do just television or one s specific segment. Yeah. Do you think we're going to continue to see more people who do that and um, explain, you know, why do you think that's so beneficial? It depends and uh, definitely I think it's beneficial. For me it's great because it really, uh, it's nice to have a lot of variety and it keeps me very interested in multiple things. Um, but I think diversifying yourself is the best thing you can do in any career, any sort of field. Um, you know, I think it's a little bit generational as well. Um, 
I know a lot of my peers are, are doing a lot of the same things, so to me it's pretty normal. Um, but I think it's really important, and I think it's really fun. I think there's also maybe a little bit of a fear associated with jumping out into something different, but how are you going to know until you try? Exactly.